In this exercise, I'm going to show you how to apply character level formatting attributes to text inside InDesign. Now, by character level formatting, I mean things like typeface and style and size and other attributes that affect just the selected characters of type. I'm working inside of this document called placeholdertext.indd, found inside the exercise files folder. I'm going to switch to my type tool. Or another way to get to your type tool very easily in InDesign is just to double click inside of some type with the standard selection tool. And notice that not only switches me to the type tool, but it also does the double duty of adding my blinking insertion marker. So the text is active. Now I want to go ahead and select some text to format. You can select text in a variety of ways. You can drag over it like so. You can double click on a word to select an entire word. You can triple click to select an entire line of type, or you can click four times in a row, quadruple click, to select an entire paragraph. And you don't have to click particularly rapidly. You can click those four times in a fairly leisurely manner. Anyway, what I want to do is I want to select just the first two words in this paragraph, Alice Reconteurs, and I want to make that text bigger and set it in a different font. So I'm going to double click on one word and on a second click I'll drag to select the second word. So that's a click, click and drag essentially to select those two words. Now I'll go up to my control panel and notice that all of the options in this context sensitive control panel have switched over to text formatting options, which is great. So InDesign is smart enough to know that most likely what I want to do at this point is change the formatting of my text. I could click in this first item right here in order to activate the typeface, which happens to be a font called Trebuchet. Now I can peruse the fonts on my system by pressing the arrow key. So if I press the down arrow key, I'll advance to the next font alphabetically. If I press the up arrow key, I'll advance to a previous font, again alphabetically in the list. I can also, of course, click this down pointing arrowhead and choose a font that's available to my system or if I know the font that I want to use, I can go ahead and type it in. And I know that I want to use a font called Myriad Pro. So I'll just type in Myriad P, and that's all I have to type in to get the entire Myriad Pro string right there. And then I'll press the Enter key in order to apply it. So InDesign will help you locate that first font that starts with the text you enter. Now I'm going to increase the type size by selecting a different type size from the list, like 18 point might work nicely. I can also, of course, enter a specific value if I want to, and that value can be highly specific, down to a decimal point. You can use these buttons right here in order to increase the size or decrease the size of the font. And here's a keyboard shortcut that I find to be terribly useful. If you press Control Shift Period or Command Shift Period on the Mac, you'll increase the type size incrementally. And you can think of that, by the way, as Control Shift Greater Than Sign because the greater than sign shares the key with the period. That's command shift greater than sign on the Mac. To take the type size down, press control shift comma or command shift comma on the Mac. That would be control shift or command shift less than sign. I'm going to take this font up to 24 points like so. And then I also want to make it bold and italic. Now, inside of another program, you might find bold and italic buttons. We don't really have that here. We do have an all caps button. So I could click on the all caps button to make this text all caps if I wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and undo that, however. What I would prefer to do is make it bold and italic. Rather than clicking on buttons, though, you choose the font that you want to use from this style list right here. And the great thing about this list is InDesign is only showing you those styles that were made available by the designer of the font. So you may not see a bold italic style depending on the font or you may see much more than you bargained for. In this case for example we're seeing all kinds of variations including bold condensed italic which is what I'd like to apply. Finally let me tell you something about line spacing which is called letting. I'm going to go ahead and quadruple click in this paragraph down here and I'll change it to an outrageously large size. Like let's try something like 24 point. And that's going to make the lines of type overlap each other because they're spaced too closely together. And that's a function of this value right here, the letting value. And notice it's currently set to 15 point. If ever you find your text overlapping and you need to fix it fast, go ahead and click this down pointing arrowhead and choose the auto option and that will go ahead and solve all of your spacing problems right away. Now I'll go ahead and press the escape key in order to accept my modifications and if I didn't like those last couple of changes I could press control Z a couple of times in a row on Windows or command Z a couple of times on the Mac. 
And that gives you a sense of how to apply character level formatting attributes in InDesign.